Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I promise not to delay the proceedings for much longer, except to just briefly comment on some of the contrib well, the free contributions um, that came subsequent to me presenting the bill. Um, Mr. Speaker, let me start off with the contribution from the member for Castries East and Prime Minister. Um, I think the Prime Minister made a very important point when he um, attempted to establish that nexus between solid waste um, management or indiscriminate dumping of, of waste in our waterways um, and how that can adversely affect our country, particularly given the fact that we know one of the things coming out of climate change is that we have more, more, more um, severe flooding and things of that sort. Um, Mr. Speaker, but he made, also made a very important point, and it is a point that has been made at some of the regional and international meetings that I've attended um, in the realm of climate change. And it is something that has been spoken about extensively, that the Caribbean is becoming uninsurable, and that the big insurance companies, they are looking to invest elsewhere because of the frequency with which um, the weather systems visit our shores that even before we are able to recover and insurance companies are able to pay for the damages inflicted, um, Mr. Speaker, there's another one on the horizon waiting to unleash. So it is something that we have to, to look at and in, in our building codes, etc., we have to ensure that we, we invest in more climate resilient infrastructure um, to, to make us um, a, a, a region that insurance companies would want to invest monies in. Mr. Speaker, the member for Library, he spoke about the main offenders in terms of global greenhouse gas emissions, and he, he attempted to establish a comparison between um, St. Lucia, which is practically at net zero, um, meaning that we contribute, we do not contribute any greenhouse, we do not contrib contribute or emit greenhouse gases um, in comparison to the, the, the amount of trees and forest coverage that we have, but yet we are the ones um, living on the front line of climate change and bearing the brunt of climate change. Mr. Speaker, um, he also mentioned some of the funding sources and he, he spoke about the Green Climate Fund or the GCF. He also mentioned the Adaptation Fund and the Loss and Damage Fund. And I can tell you, one of the, the, the painstaking um, features of the whole climate change discourse is the amount of bureaucracy and the frustration you have to put up with on a daily basis trying to negotiate for monies to build back after you've been impacted by, by a weather system. And I think that was a very telling point. Uh, Mr. Speaker, naturally the, the, the longest of the contributions came from the very learned member from Viewfort South. And I've always said that whenever he presents on a bill in this house, um, it's always an exercise in legal ed education for which we don't have to pay. And so there's always a lot to learn. But as I would have indicated, Mr. Speaker, when I presented the legislation, um, I cited that this was the first of its kind. There would be some issues with the, first, with the draft that has been presented here today, but it is something that we will constantly be reworking, of course, making the legislation tighter and addressing some of the issues that he cited in his um, contribution. But he also made a very important point as it relates to public education. Now, the custom from what I, I know in this honorable house is that legislation always comes um, with a lexicon of the, the area or, or, or the trade. Um, but it is up to us as public officials and as head, heads of agencies, Mr. Speaker, to go out there and ensure that we distill um, the information in the bill and we present it to people on a level and in terms that they can understand. But climate change is too serious a phenomenon as it impacts our country for the entire population not to be um, sensitized and educated in terms of how um, serious an impact climate change can have on the development of our country. He mentioned um, methane gas um, coming out of, of cattle production and livestock. Where is Mr. Speaker? Let me just say very quickly that we are working with the Center for Clean Air Policy. That is a non-profit organization established in Washington, D.C. And they are spending millions of dollars working with Latin America and the Caribbean, selected countries, of course, 
to deal with, with the, the emission of, of methane at, at landfills. And St. Lucia happens to be one of the, the countries benefiting from that particular program. Mr. Speaker, the proposed legislation, I believe, is progressive. Um, it is timely. As I indicated, it is the first of its kind in the Caribbean. And it really accentuates the appreciation that we have as an administration to climate change and the debilitating impact it can have on the socio the socioeconomic um, landscape of our country. Mr. Speaker, there are adjustments to be made. We will continually rework the, the legislation. And um, as time permits, Mr. Speaker, we will have a refined piece of legislation that will be more aligned and more in keeping with some of the issues that have been highlighted here today. I expected for there to have been issues and questions to have been asked. But as I indicated, um, this is working progress. And as we move forward, we will look to have a much tighter piece of legislation that will guide and inform the general climate change discourse in our country.